In this section, we're going to be looking at some more energy saving tips by looking at the water heater, the furnace, and windows and doors to give you some ideas of things that you can do to increase comfort, savings, and safety in your home. It's important to look at the furnace filter at least every other month, especially if you're running central air conditioning, as we need to have good airflow through the entire system. Here I'm removing the filter, taking a look to see how dirty it is. You can see there's a fair amount of accumulation on that. Note that the fins on the furnace cover are not as big as the filter, so the filter can be turned around. What I'm doing is pointing to which direction that filter should be applied so that the airflow goes through the proper side of that filter. We also want that filter to be very tight to the furnace cover. And we're gonna check both filters out. Again, looking for the arrow on the side of the filter, which tells us what direction we should put that in. One other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the safety switch of the furnace and turn that off, and then do an inspection of the blower fan to make sure that the blower fan is clean. Your furnace should be serviced at least every other year by a licensed professional heating contractor. This assures that your unit will run safely throughout the year and provide maximum comfort and energy savings. Ask your park manager for recommendations or search for a service professional in your area online. Here I'm taking a look at the different components and looking at the bottom part, I notice a large gap around the A-coil access point. Areas like this need to be sealed up. That hole can be covered up using silver-faced duct tape, UL181 rated. This is something your furnace technician can do or go to your hardware store and ask for the foil duct tape, UL181 rated. Now that we've established that air can flow freely through your furnace and be heated and cooled efficiently, now we want to be sure it can be distributed effectively to each and every room of your home. Registers like this one are often found in newer and double wide homes. Registers like this one are more often found in older manufactured homes. First, let's find all the registers. They're typically along the outside wall or near the middle of the room. This register is located in an entryway. As you can see, the entryway rug and coat tree are blocking the register. You will want to keep rugs and furniture away from registers so that air can move freely. Next, let's take a look at the register itself. Make sure that the damper is open and that the fins aren't crushed. This will ensure that the heated or cooled air can move into the room. While we're here, let's open up the register and remove any dust and debris that could slow air movement or affect indoor air quality. Next, let's take a look at your home's hot water temperature. We can determine your home's hot water temperature as you do an everyday task like washing the dishes. Once you have some water in the sink, turn your tap to full hot. Now let's take the temperature of the water by using a kitchen thermometer. A safe temperature is around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit can be dangerous to the elderly, small children, and infants as their skin is more sensitive. At 140 degrees Fahrenheit, water can cause third degree burns in children in one second and in five seconds for adults. If you find that the water coming from your tap when set to full hot is greater than 120 degrees Fahrenheit, you will want to turn down the temperature on your home's water heater. If you have determined that the water temperature in your home is too hot, then you'll want to turn down the thermostat on your water heater. On this gas water heater, you'll notice that there are no numbers to help us, so we want to turn that down incrementally. Turn it down step by step over the course of a day or two until we reach the desired temperature. Electric water heaters are a little trickier. Start by turning off the power to the unit, which is generally at the breaker panel. Then remove the access plate and insulation. Using a plastic handled screwdriver, turn down the temperature setting to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Keep in mind that electric water heaters often have two panels. You will need to turn down the temperature in both places. We're going to do an inspection of the water heater compartment, looking at pipe insulation, safety features like no junction box on that heater itself, a good job of insulating the water pipes, looking at any gaps around the plug-in, up in the ceiling where it meets the wall, there's a very large gap there that needs to be sealed. And then along the edges, we notice some gapping where the sheetrock was installed. All these can be caulked and sealed in place. It's difficult to get to, as you can see, that's very tight quarters. But these are places where air is being exchanged to the outside and reducing our energy efficiency, costing us money and comfort as well. So as I do this inspection, I look to see, well, what can I do to seal this up? There's that large gap between the popcorn textured ceiling and the wall itself. Now you can see some gaps on the right-hand side and around that electrical box. I use a good quality acrylic silicone-based caulk. Now there it is, the finished product. It's going to be a little bit messy because it's difficult to get to. And then you'll see I use some of that pipe wrap that was used in insulating the water heater and stuff that in that large gap and then caulk both sides of it. Now that seals it up quite nicely. Another excellent way to increase comfort, reduce drafts, and improve the thermal efficiency of your windows is to add these plastic window kits. Notice that I have already placed a double-sided tape on the frame itself. And now I'm installing the plastic and using the hair dryer to tighten it up. Before you put the plastic on, make sure that the window casing is tight against the wall. Caulk it or nail it in place so that there's no gaps behind that. Close the storm window and latch the primary window so that you don't have to take that plastic off. Now use that hair dryer to warm up the plastic and warm up that tape. This will allow for a good stick that will then be durable over the course of the entire winter. I've taken the cover off the bathroom fan to expose the inner workings. You'll see a gap between the housing and the ceiling. We're going to seal that up. Warm, moist air can leave the bathroom and enter the ceiling cavity where it will condense on the underside of the roof, causing rotting and roof decking failure. Here I'm running that caulk on there. Now you noticed a little previously that bathroom fan was turning. Even when it's not operating, there's still a certain amount of air that does leave the house because the damper is probably not completely 100% airtight. Doors can be a source of comfort complaints and air loss. You notice here that this door sweep has a good chunk taken out of it on the right hand side. Well, an easy fix is to put a replacement door sweep on it. As it's applied, make sure that it actually swings all the way open, doesn't bind on the floor, and that it seals to the threshold. In order to properly prepare for winter, I want to take a look in the crawl space underneath the home. Here I'm removing a piece of skirting below the water heater compartment because I know that's where the water line is going to be entering the home. So using a pry bar and a putty knife, I remove the top rail and then I'll be able to slide out the individual panels locating where that water line does come in. See I remove things off to the side so I don't run into them, accidentally step over them or break them. Okay, just doing a quick visual, seeing where that water line is, and then sliding the panels out. You might have, want to have a drop cloth, piece of cardboard, something nice to lay on because it can be wet and damp, pretty yucky underneath there. Flashlight, a mask, goggles. Use proper protection while you're going underneath there. So here I am looking at the heat tape noticing that it's still plugged in and that it's installed quite nicely. You see the shutoff valve right there, drained for the water heater. There's Armaflex pipe wrap 
placed over the heat tape and then electrical tape is used to secure it. It needs to go the entire length from the home all the way to the water outlet from the city. But you'll notice, like I said, the heat tape is plugged in. It's been plugged in all summer. This does not have a thermostatically controlled sensor on it. So it's plugged in all the time, costing you big bucks because this is not cheap to operate. Find a way, either through your, your calendar or through your phone reminder, to write down that you unplug it in springtime. This will save you money over the springtime and conversely plug it in in fall. Now after the inspection is done, I've looked at the road barrier, looked at other things. I'm just going to be putting back the paneling, cleaning out that track to make sure the skirting stays in tight so that wind or critters cannot get in there and cause damage. We want to make sure the road barrier is as tight as possible. I'm not going to really go into that in this video, but you can find videos online that talk about road barrier repair and how to patch it up in order to have your house be more comfortable, energy efficient, and safe. Well, thank you everybody for watching. We hope you learned some easy ways to improve your comfort and increase your manufactured home's energy efficiency.